This is an upper body strength session for your luteal phase that has an emphasis on the arms and shoulders. This one, I have to say, packs a little bit of a punch, even though we're using very light weights. So I would err on the side of going lighter than you might think you need during this workout. I'm using a set of eight pound dumbbells. You could probably get away with anything from one to 10 pounds, noting that the heavier it gets, the more challenging it gets and the more modifications you may have to take throughout. So I would encourage you maybe to go a little bit lighter so that you can keep it sustainable, find full range of motion in most of the exercises and get more from every rep. Today we're taking fundamental movement patterns for the arms and shoulders and we're exploring different grips, different ways to load the pattern. We are exploring kind of the eccentric loading phase, so kind of that return to kind of the starting position. We're doing all of this to be able to load the muscles a little bit differently and to take advantage of lighter resistance. We're looking to stay in the endurance training mode, so more steady state efforts as opposed to having these many peaks and valleys, so the peak effort and then recovery. Instead, we want to stay more steady state throughout to tap into our slower metabolic pathways and to really preserve our energy and muscle during this phase. So a lot of metabolic changes that happen in the luteal phase when we see progesterone come onto the scene. We see these predictable declines in our performance indicators, but we shouldn't see them as a defect. I don't want you to feel bummed out during this time in the cycle. Instead, I want you to see it as an invitation to try things Things a different way. This is really the gift of cyclical fitness that we can train in all of these different modes. We can explore these little nuances in different movement patterns and get more from the practice. So this is really the art of attention in today's practice. I want you to focus on how the sensation changes just by changing and flipping our grips. So we're doing a lot of re reverse grip work. We're focusing a lot on the lowering phase. Today's workout has three sets. We have three exercises in the first two sets and then just two exercises in the third set. We're completing them in back-to-back -back intervals. So you'll complete all of the exercises without rest. And then we have a very brief transition period after each set. So 45 seconds of work throughout and then 15 seconds to transition. You will have extra recovery between each set of work. So a full minute to kind of set up for the next exercise group. And this one comes in around 22, 23 minutes for the workout portion. And when you add that to your five minute warm up and cool down, you've got under 35 minutes for your workout altogether. If you have a little bit of reserve left in the tank, you want some focused core work. There is a four to eight minute uh, core finisher where we're using that little bit of resistance just to get more feedback from the core and it is upper body focus. So it'll be that the target for the arms and shoulders while cultivating core strength. I've also included a workout preview that's linked in the description of this video. That one's going to give you a breakdown of all of these movement patterns. It's a great way to kind of try the exercises on, notice how they're going to feel so that you can choose your weight appropriately. And then once the workout starts, you can stay present, you can stay checked in. You're not having to fuss with changing things around in the moment. You have all of those options available to you from the beginning. So now let's get into this workout. Let's go ahead and get warmed up for this upper body strength session. We're going to start in the center of your mat, feet about hips or shoulder width apart. Let's take a huge breath in, inhale. And then as you exhale, side bend. So reach one arm up and over to the opposite side. You can take that hand to the back of the head, press the head into the hand, really lift up and out of the hip creases here. Let's enjoy one more big breath. And then come up through center, inhale, we'll switch sides. On your exhale, side bend to the other side. So I really want you to focus on lifting both sides of the waist evenly. Again, you have that option to bring the top hand to the back of the head, lifting that elbow skyward. Let's come up through center, big inhale. This time as you exhale, twist to one side, bring the elbows to shoulder height. Inhale through center, exhale, twist to the other side. So I want you to keep your hips facing forward and really focus on this upper body twist. Hug those elbows down, feel the back wake up. 
So we're just warming all of the major joints in the upper body, creating a little bit of tone, a little bit of muscle awareness. Last one like this. Let's bring your hands to opposite elbows behind you and very simply circle the neck one direction and then the other. Creating a bit of freedom here, softening any tension that you might have in the neck and shoulders. Start to make your way toward the back of your mat as you continue circling the head nice and easy from side to side. As you're ready, you can release the hands, reach the arms overhead. On your exhale, take the hands to the mat, walk out to your plank position, push up here, knees up or knees down, and then hands back to feet. We'll take it all the way back up, reach the arms, and exhale, walk it out. Find your push-up position. Keep the belly strong, waking up the chest here. Let's get one more like this. And then walk it back to downward dog. Find your downward dog just for a moment. And as you inhale, bring the knees down, soften the belly, gaze up, really start to extend the spine. Exhale back through downward facing dog. This is our new pattern here. Inhale, come down, cow pose, stretch the spine, gaze up, and exhale through downward facing dog. Let's get one more big breath here, inhale. And as you exhale, downward facing dog. Come back to your tabletop once again. This time reach the right arm forward, left leg back, level the shoulders and the hips. And on your exhale, draw the knee forward, elbow back. Keep the arm and leg in parallel tracks rather than crossing the body. So I really want you to feel that shortening of the gap between your hip points and low ribs. Next day's neutral. The spine is in that single plane. Last one and we'll switch sides. So left arm reaches, left, right leg back, and we draw the knee in, elbow back. Inhale as you extend, exhale as you draw the limbs closer together. Big, huge breath, radiate outward, and then pull to the center, really activating the core to support our upper body strength practice. Bring hand and knee down here. Take your right hand behind your head. Open that elbow nice and wide and exhale, wrap that elbow under. So we're freeing the upper back now, the thoracic spine. I want you to keep your hips as stable as you can and really isolate the movement, articulate the movement in the upper back. So you're, imagine that gentle touch, pressing that elbow open and then wrapping it under. Last one here. And we'll switch right hand down, left hand behind the head. Let's open it up and wrap it under. Let your hips stay directly over your knees, that front shoulder directly over the wrist. Open nice and wide and release. So I really want you to feel that sensation of the upper back, the rib cage moving independently from the hips. We can sort of free those two structures to get more range of motion, more mobility. Next up, plank hold. Let's come into your plank position and then we'll refine this posture. So draw the sitting bones underneath you, curl the pubic bone toward the navel. And I want you to stretch your heart forward, lengthen the neck, hug the heels of your hands toward the ball mounts of your feet. Feel that activation there in the core. We'll be here just about five or so more seconds and then slowly start to walk feet to hands hands to feet to the center of your mat nice and easy roll up bone by bone take a huge breath in reach the arms and exhale sigh it out hopefully your upper body is feeling open and ready to move and now you can get into your workout Let's jump right into this upper body strength session for your luteal phase. All you will need today is a lighter set of dumbbells. I'm using an eight pound set. You want to drop down somewhere between 20 and 30% of what you might use for the arms and shoulders in the follicular phase. And with this one, we are playing with different grips. So 
I would err on the side of going a little bit lighter than you what than you might think you need. You will really be tapping into muscle activation and you can go a long way with a lighter set of weights. We are working to intervals here. We're doing back-to-back -back continuous intervals, so each exercise is completed for 45 seconds. We'll do either two or three exercises back to back before taking a very short break. We are using lighter weights. We're trying to stay in that steady state continuous mode. So the recovery interval is just enough to get set up for the next set. Then between our sets of work, we'll have about a minute to recover and set up for the next group of exercises. So I will get our timer started. As always, we'll have about 20 seconds to set up. Our first set of exercises is using a reverse grip. So we're going to turn the palms to face out. I want you to bring your hips, your feet about hips or shoulder width apart. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Draw the low belly in. Find that strong standing position. We're going to bring the weights into that static curl, and we're simply straightening the arms directly out in front. So to chest or shoulder height, we breathe in as we come back and extend. I want you to feel a little bit of a sort of pulling back of the elbows here, toning the upper back to get that weight back to the starting position. And I want you to notice the body does not move. So belly stays strong. We're not leaning away from those weights. We're not letting momentum take over and swinging. So you really have to tone the low belly. You have to support the lower spine, keep the integration in the core and pelvic floor so that you can isolate the chest and shoulders here. Last one, we're going to come into our bent position and then simply Extend the arms, come back to that static curl. Extend, straighten, and then come back to your curl. So we come to that 90 degree bend, and then we reach out. Your arms will be slightly wider just to accommodate the heads of the dumbbell. And I want you to keep the palms facing down as you extend those arms back. Watch out for the shoulders shrugging here. We'll keep those shoulders nice and relaxed. You should feel some healthy heat in the backs of the arms and those triceps. Belly stays toned. After this, we're coming into a reverse grip press right away. So we're gonna keep that reverse grip and just take it overhead. Here we go, come into position, start at shoulder height, press it up. Back down and press. If you start to feel any fatigue or you need just to take a little bit of a pause, you can always alternate sides. Experiment with that range of motion. Really want you to focus on squeezing the pinky side of those dumbbells together. And you don't have to come all the way up. I really want you to focus on keeping that grip in that reverse position. So you might have a slight bend of the elbows at the top. You're still working the shoulders like crazy, the arms like crazy. We don't have to extend all the way. I'd rather the heads of the dumbbell stay touching and rest. That is the first round. So you can see where the lighter weight goes a long way with this slightly modified grip. Just that little bit of a change in the way we're holding the weights gives us a completely different sensation. Let's begin. We reach it out and back. So this is a great opportunity in the luteal phase where we are aiming for lighter weights to experiment with these different grips, these different holds, ways to recruit your muscles in different ways so that we get a well-rounded practice. I'm taking singles here and then a double just to keep that sustainable form. So if you start to feel your lower back arch, or you're feeling that fatigue in the shoulders, I want you to drop down to single reps. After this, we're coming to that bent tricep kickback. Come into position, start with your static curl and then straighten the arms back, nice and easy. You wanna keep the arms as close as you can while still allowing for that dumbbell to pass the outer thighs to pass your legs without any interference. You can bring your legs a little bit closer together if you wish. Reach it back and to that curl. So you come about to the 90 degree angle each time. You should feel your biceps working in that isometric hold. 
and then the triceps in the extension and that kickback. Last three, two, and one, reverse press. I'm gonna take opposite sides here, single, single, and then squeezing the pinky side of the dumbbells for the double. So again, it's okay if your arm doesn't straighten, if your arms don't straighten all the way, you can keep that little micro bend in the elbow. What I want you to focus on is keeping that reverse grip. So not letting the wrists rotate forward. Find what you need to make your form steady all the way till the end. So that might mean, again, taking single reps and then a double. Last one here and rest. That was our second of three rounds. We have just a quick transition and then we'll finish it out for that third set. So coming into your reverse grip once again, we'll get that static hold and begin. So we reach it forward and back, almost like a pull, like a little bit of a row as you come to that starting position. And then we alternate. I want you to keep the shoulders nice and even, nice and square. These are all open chain exercises. So by their very nature, they are isolation exercises, which means the weight is free to move away from the body. And that means we're isolating different muscle groups. So here, the biceps and chest, you should feel that nice heat. Last one, come into your bent position, keep that curl and extend. So come back to the starting point and reach those arms straight back. You can always alternate if you need to, side to side, and then both together. I love that option just to give a little bit of recovery, a little bit of a breather for one side, and then you come back strong together. I don't know about you, but this lighter weight definitely feels like plenty for this workout. Got 10 more seconds of this movement, and then we'll switch to that reverse grip press. Again, we're toning the belly, come into position, keeping that low belly hugging in. You should feel this in your shoulders quite a bit. We do have that little bit of isometric work because we're keeping the elbows elevated. And then we've got that strong work in the shoulders. So I'm taking single reps and then both together. Again, sort of like a three quarter rep when you have both arms together, because we want to keep the hands facing toward you, palms facing in. Last three, two, and one. You can set those weights down for a moment. Circle your shoulders here, open the chest and upper back. You might even stretch the forearms a little bit. We do have a full minute of recovery here in between. And then we'll start our second set of work. So our second set of exercises, we're going to have both dumbbells <clears throat> in a half kneeling position. We're going to start with one weight at the chest. We come into an Arnold press. We lower it down nice and slow, that big, beautiful arc, and then come back up to the press. So we rotate back to the chest. That's our movement pattern on the first side. You have the other hand just holding that weight. And I really want you to focus on keeping that arm straight if you can, as you come through that rotation. <clears throat> And then you'll come into a kneeling tape press here, pinky side up, <clears throat> you've got the knuckles facing in, you're just going to straighten those arms and come back to center. Nice and easy, nice and slow. So grab your weight, come into position. So the moving arm is opposite your front leg. I want 90 degree bends, I want you to curl the tail slightly under and let's begin. Press that weight overhead, take it nice and wide out to the side, back up. If you need to, you can add a micro bend to that elbow. Again, just to keep the strain out of the shoulder and to make sure that you're not needing to lean away or to swing that weight. I 
really dial in your form here. Feel all the ways that you are recruiting both range of motion and strength in that shoulder. We've got just about five seconds on this side, and then we'll come into our full kneeling position for tape press. So pinky side up, we're straightening and coming back down. Tone the belly, keep your spine straight and strong as you come through this movement. You can always alternate sides again, single and a single, and then both together for that double. You might feel that first working side, the arm is already sort of pre-fatigued. So don't let that compromise your form. Always have the options of single-sided reps. You can drop down the weight a little bit, whatever you need so that you can maintain form. We're going to switch now. So your opposite leg comes forward and we'll come into the other side. Same action here, Arnold press. And then we've got that circle out and around. Bring it back to the chest, rotate and down and around. So again, curl the tail under so that you feel that little bit of a stretch in the back hip flexor. That'll help you connect to the core center. This is an asymmetrical loading pattern. So we have that core activation to keep the spine upright, to keep it from leaning, which would make this easier on the shoulder. There's no cheating. We're getting that core activation and all that good work in the shoulder. 15 seconds to rest, and I'll come back to that first side. I might start with the opposite side just to kind of create a little bit more of evenness in that second exercise. Here we go. So that we don't get the first side gets the double header both times. Instead, we want to balance it out from left to right and around. Again, toning the low belly, bring it to the chest, feel that rotation. So out, around, and up. And again, you should feel the obliques firing to stabilize and support that shoulder. We're in this one for just one more rep and then we'll switch to that kneeling position. Give a little pause, shake out your shoulders, take the pinkies up and it's that tape press up and back down. So you should be feeling biceps, triceps and shoulders through this series of exercises. I know that heat is starting to build. So can you check in with your form, soften those shoulders away from the ears? You got this. I'm taking single-sided reps here. <sighs> Again, feeling that first side, those back-to-back -back exercises definitely has a cumulative effect. <sighs> and we'll switch. So take your opposite foot forward, come into your Arnold press, and then that weight goes down and around. After this, we have just one more set of these three exercises, and then we have a full minute to recover before closing it out with just a superset, just a pair of exercises to finish this workout strong. So again, you're trying to elongate the spine, so keep the sides of the waist nice and tall. We're looking to kind of take out that compression or swinging from side to side and take it down, rest. You can shake out your grip. We'll come right back in in just 10 more seconds. We'll finish these last three exercises of this set. Let's come into position, half kneeling, and let's begin. Take it out and around, slowly lower. This is one that even though we're using that light weight, you might feel this one in the arms and shoulders tomorrow. We are making this lighter weight do a lot of work for us, focusing on 
that eccentric phase. So here, we've got that nice push up and then slowly lowering that weight down, taking it through the same path back up. Shoulders and hips are nice and even. We're not tilting side to side, not rotating. And as best as you can, you're keeping that working arm straight and strong. Let's switch to our tape press, pinkies up and squeeze. So we come into that bend and then we straighten the arms, extend. So you're locking out the elbows at the top, feeling that full extension of the arm to get the triceps to fire. I'll show this from the side quickly here, just so you can see the spine stays straight and strong. You're not leaning back to accommodate those weights. So just be mindful with that lowering phase that you clear your body so they have that nice smooth path down and up. Make sure your shoulders are not shrugging. Get ready to switch in two and one. So bring that opposite leg forward, come into your Arnold press and lower it down nice and easy. Back up, straight arm, and to center. So again, this one pretty tough from a <laughs> localized muscle standpoint, but nice and easy <laughs> from a whole body standpoint. So it shouldn't feel overly intense, shouldn't feel overly strenuous, but you've got that nice healthy heat happening and it requires whole body focus. So we are in kind of this asymmetrical loading pattern, having to use the core to stabilize and rest. Set those weights down. We're gonna transition back to a standing position here. This next set of work will be a drag curl. So again, we've got the reverse grip, setting up like you would for a normal biceps curl but then we're gonna keep that weight nice and close to the body and bring the elbows straight back. So it's almost like you're just lifting those dumbbells up. Again, your hands will be a little bit away from your body just to accommodate the head of the dumbbell. But I want you to focus on keeping those wrists along the axis of the body. So you're just lifting the wrists up and back, squeezing the elbows behind you and lowering down. That's a drag curl. And then we're going to come into our upright row. Again, your elbows nice and neutral, shoulders are open, upright row, weight is slightly away from the body. You're gonna straighten those arms out in front and then slowly lower down. So I want you to focus a lot on that eccentric loading phase in the second half of your cycle. Helps send the right signals to the body to balance our catabolic metabolism that tends to come online during the second half of the cycle. Let's get ready in three, two, one. So we lift the elbow straight up and back and slide it down. So again, your hands can be a little bit away from your body, but I want you to feel the elbows sliding back in parallel tracks, almost like you're trying to join the elbows behind you. Just sliding the head of that dumbbell straight up the body and back down. So it's a slightly different loading for the biceps here and helps promote that scapular mobility. So the ability of your shoulders to articulate, to lift and lower, to retract and protract. So we're just kind of creating more range of motion in the shoulders with this different grip. And then we're coming into our upright row. So again, we lift it up. You're gonna straighten those arms out and slowly lower down. This is bonus core work. You lift it up, press it out without moving your body, and then slowly lower it down. I want you to avoid giving that weight to gravity. As you come through the lowering phase, can you stay in control that entire way down? You can also take single-sided if you wish. And then maybe do the upright row together. So lots of ways to break up the movement patterns if you need to move one arm at a time. This one, kind of the burnout for the shoulders and rest. Just 15 seconds on the clock. These will move pretty quickly because we just have two exercises. Coming back to that drag curl next. In five seconds here, grab your weight. So again, you're sliding that weight up the same plane as the body and back down. Lift it up 
I want you to keep the shoulders relaxed. Hug the elbows behind you. You got this. Let's finish this last set strong. I want you to feel that activation in the biceps and just notice how your shoulder blades can move, how they lift and lower. Got 20 more seconds of this exercise. Again, we're keeping that steady state flow, kind of that moderate, low to moderate intensity, but it's continuous. Last three, two, and one. Coming into your upright row next, pressing those weights forward, upright row, press and lower down. If this gets to be too much, you can always stick with just that upright row or maybe every other one. Add that reverse front raise. Shoulders are pretty toasty already by this point in the workout, so find what works for you. We lift it up, press it out, tone the belly, and reverse. Again, focus on keeping your shoulders away from the ears. Lift it up, press it out, and reverse. Last three, two, and one. We have just one more round of these two exercises, our drag curl and the upright row comp <laughs> compound movement. Let's grab those weights and finish it out. So feet nice and close together. We lift it up and back down. Elbows hug in behind you. Here, I want you to take note that you're not flaring the low ribs. You've got that nice integration in the belly, but you do have that stretch across the chest. So it's almost like you're puffing your heart out and up, stretching across the chest, but pulling those front ribs in. We're here for 15 more seconds, and then we'll finish our last exercise. Last five seconds. And this one, you can feel it in the biceps in such a powerful way. I love kind of switching up the grip just to kind of explore different parts of the muscle group that we don't target quite as often. And down. Let's finish this strong. I know my shoulders are tired. Yours are too. We've got just about 25 seconds left to go. So again, brace the belly. You can always take single-sided and take a few of those and then come back in for that final 10 seconds. Let's get it here. Tone the belly. Feel that your belly is resisting any leaning and rest. Come down. So we got some bonus core work there. We do have a very optional core finisher. This one will use our lighter weight. We'll use it in an upper body focused way so that we're getting both kind of a burnout for the upper body and that very intentional core integration. That one will be about four to eight minutes, depending on whether you choose to complete one or two rounds. You always have the option to just to go straight to the cool down. You can use the timestamps in the description of this video to skip you right ahead to that cool down. Because this workout, even though it's a luteal phase workout, wasn't super high intensity, you are feeling that heat, that fatigue in the arms and shoulders. So by all means, feel free to head to that cool down now. Otherwise, I'll see you next for the finisher. Let's get right to this weighted core finisher. You're going to need just a single light dumbbell. I'm using something very light, just an eight pound. You could get away with even three to five pounds, just something to add a little bit of resistance to these core focused exercises. We have four exercises. We're keeping our interval structure 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. We'll complete it for two rounds or you can stop after the first round if you just want that quick four minute finisher. I'll get us 20 seconds on the clock to begin. Our first movement pattern is a side plank pull with a slow reverse fly. So we're coming into that side plank. Options are knees down or forearm down. Might take the forearm option just to demonstrate here first, but you can always come up onto the hands if you wish. You're going to 
come into that side plank and then we're simply pulling that weight to the shoulder stretching that arm straight and slowing that path down i want you to go as slowly as you possibly can in that kind of reverse fly motion but it's just that descent and then you pull that weight straight to the shoulder extend it overhead and slowly lower you should feel your obliques the transverse abdominis firing up to resist the tendency of your body to want to lean or kind of help support that weight on the way down it's all core strength here to stabilize so you're pulling up at a slight angle bringing that weight to the shoulder and then straightening it out all the way down and rest come down we're going to come into a kneeling position you're going to bring the weight overhead we're taking a very gentle side bend so i really want you to Pay attention to the sensation in the low spine that you're not creating any strain here. We're going to lean to one side and come back up. Again, doesn't take much movement to feel the effect of that resistance. A couple things to focus on. I want you to keep both sides of the waist long. So I want you to really tone the low belly, make sure the spine is active. So we're not pulling on the spine to create that bend. It's very intentional. We're doing it on purpose, and that requires that you activate the rivers of the spine that support your entire torso here. I want you to squeeze the upper arm bones into the ears so you have that spacious quality in the shoulders. Relax the shoulders away from the ears, and rest. Let's come down to the other side for our side plank pull. Again, we're focusing on that lowering phase, going as slowly as you possibly can. You can always take the knees down if you wanna just be in the upper body part of the pattern or get that bonus core work, bring it up. Pull that weight in, extend the arm and slowly resist. So you are kind of resisting that drop, that pull of gravity and you should feel the underside of your waist really firing up. I want you to press firmly into that bottom forearm, into that bottom foot as you bring that weight down to create the activation that we're looking for. I want you to also focus on pressing the shoulder blades onto the back so that your shoulders are spacious. We're not hunching the shoulders toward the ears here. We've got lots of room and rest. Come back to your kneeling position, this time for a front press to a twist. Come back through center. If you need to, you bring it back to the chest or you just alternate sides. Depends on the weight that you're using. So we press it out. I want you to fix the position of your lower body. So hips stay facing forward and then we come in. Reach it out, twist. Really mobilize the upper back. So the rib cage is rotating. The pelvis is fixed. So I want you to feel that articulation between those two structures. So you're fixing the position of the hips. Don't let them move. And then your rib cage rotates. It's this beautiful range of motion that we have in this plane in the spine but we need to use it so that we don't get into that frozen position where our hips and our, excuse me, our pelvis and rib cage always move together. That limits our range of motion. So I really want you to feel the difference between those two in that movement pattern. Back to the side plank, let's come into position and pull it up, straighten, lower, control. Again, focus here on that lowering phase, on pushing into the forearm and that bottom foot to tone the underside of the waist. You'll also feel this in the shoulders, a little bit of the back here. So we hug that weight to the shoulder, extend, keep that arm as straight as you can as you come down. So even without weight, this can be a really powerful core exercise. You can ditch that dumbbell altogether and just focus on mind-muscle connection, on slowing that rhythm down, and come down. This is our second round. 
and we'll finish it strong. We're back to that overhead side bend next. Again, this one doesn't have to be a huge range of motion. I want you to focus more on elongating both sides of the waist. So up and over, back to center. You wanna stay in control of that weight. Don't let it pull you, but you're feeling that nice tone in the side waist that resists the side bend. <sighs> Lifting up and out of the hips. So it's like you're telescoping the rib cage up and out and then slight bend to the side. This is another one that tends to sneak up on me. You might feel this in the ribs, the intercostal muscles tomorrow. And just that gentle reminder to lift the spine up tall, to stand up straight, and release. Let's come down, side plank on the other side. Just two more exercises here in this finisher. Let's come into position, so really connect that forearm to the ground, connect the knife edge of your foot to the ground, and let's begin. Take it up, slow lower. So I want you to fix the position of the body so it stays in that stacked position, shoulders stacked, hips stacked, and then only that upper arm moves. Notice how the sensation changes as you come through that pull. You feel the back extend, and then it's all in the side waist here, feeling that core strength. This is the type of isolation work, that type of targeted work that supports the rest of your strength practice because you are building such a strong core from the inside out. We're doing this intentional work, come down, to promote stability, control. That core strength helps prevent injury and supports you throughout your daily activities. Let's get ready for our twist and Take it out, rotate just the rib cage. Come back to center. So fix the position of your hips. They stay facing forward. You should feel that nice tone in the side waist. Keep the shoulders relaxed away from the ears. This one, I love the dumbbell twist. Such a powerful exercise and really helps you connect to those deeper layers. You can hear it in my voice, the change in the breath as you come through that twist. There's that little bit of compression. Last three, two, and one. You can set that weight off to the side. I want you to slowly make your way back up to standing. So maybe come through a little cat cow, just sway the hips side to side to release the side waist. Bring the feet to the hands, nice and easy, roll up to standing. Enjoy a big breath with me, inhale, reach your arms overhead. Notice if it feels like you're standing just that little bit taller. Now you have all this strength in the spine and shoulders. Let that breath out with a sigh. That is your finisher for today. I hope it helps support you through the rest of this phase through the rest of this cycle of workouts and you can head into your cool down next now that you have completed your upper body strength work it is time to cool down let's make our way into a tabletop position for one of my favorites cat and cow spine shoulders over wrists hips are over the knees let's inhale soften the belly gaze up shine the sitting bones back from the tailbone curl under round the spine draw your chin to chest press through your hands reverse it from the tailbone shine the sitting bones back soften the belly gaze up and as you exhale round it in draw your chin toward your chest so really feel that stretch between the bones of the spine last three two and one thread the needle now inhale reach your left arm nice and high thread it under bring that temple or ear to the mat spider your right fingertips to twist the upper back i want you to keep the hips square hip creases lifting up and back and then really press through the back of your left hand energetically drag your left shoulder over to the left rotating here last big breath 
and slowly come up, bring the forearms to the mat, press your palms together, elbows under the shoulders, come into puppy pose. So soften heart, belly, chest toward the thighs. You can rest your the crown of your head on the mat. I really want you to feel the triceps and the chest stretch here. You might sway the hips side to side. Just feel that release, create some space, kind of returning the muscles to their resting length. And then slowly come up, right arm reaches. Thread the needle now on this side, wrap it under. Bring the right ear, right temple to the mat, spider the left fingertips. Gaze through that window opening in the left arm. Square the hips as best you can. Really feel that stretch across the shoulder blade. Rotation in the spine. And then we'll slowly start to lift up. Just come into a simple kneeling position. Wrap your right arm under, left arm over for eagle arms. Simple movement here, just up and down, sort of flossing the shoulder blades here, really squeezing the palms, the wrists, the forearms. And then we'll switch sides. So now wrap left arm under, right arm on top. And again, same thing, you can lift the elbows and lower. Really feeling that separation of the shoulder blades behind you. Then we'll come into either a seated or a kneeling position. Bring your hands behind your head, wrap the elbows in. I want you to let the head tilt back, supporting it with your hands. And then ever so gently press the head forward, chin to chest. I want you to focus on length here. So try not to crunch the back of the neck, but instead create lots of space between the cervical spine bones. So the neck bones here, releasing tension from the neck and let your hands come down. Bring your hands to one side of your chest, right below the collarbone. I want you to press in and draw down and then bring the opposite ear to the shoulder. You can move your chin forward and back side to side. We feel that stretch and release. Switch sides now, so press in, drag down, and bring the ear to the opposite shoulder. Again, move the chin until you feel that nice deep stretch. Oh, I could stay there a while. Let's come into alternating wild thing here, a modified version, so fingers point out. I want you to take your hand from the chest, Reach it straight up as you lift the hips and come back down, switch. So here we're focusing on getting a little bit of that chest stretch. So your fingers are pointing either out to the sides or behind you to really open the chest and the front line of the body. Come down and now We'll come into a seated position. Let's let the knees stay generously bent. Cross your hands to opposite feet. And I want you to allow the upper back to round. Draw the navel slightly in. Let your head hang heavy. Really feel some stretch along the entire length of the spine, the rivers of the spine. You might pedal out your feet a little bit left and then right. And then nice and easy, we'll roll up. Let's come into a cross-legged position. Reach your fingertips behind you. I want you to lift up and out of the chest. Maybe send the head back. Soften the shoulders down the back. Even sway the head side to side. Just feel that nice heart opening here. Really press through the finger pads. Feel some traction as you lift up and out of the hips. Last big breath. And then we'll slowly come into our ball pose squat and nice and easy roll up to standing bone by bone all the way to the top, huge breath in. Let out a sigh. That is your upper body cool down. If you have more time, I encourage you to stretch it out just a little bit more. Really tune into what your body needs for your practice. But for now, I want to thank you so much for showing up, for putting in the work, for your cycle, for your physical, mental, and emotional health. I champion you for being here and for letting your body be moved. <laughs>